who is very courageous. Watch. A few weeks ago, Jeff was one of the few brave and principled Democrat lawmakers, in all fairness, we've been after him for a long time, <laughs> who stood up to the House Democrats and the outrageous abuse of power that you see going on right now. They can't win an election, so they're trying to steal an election. It's not happening, folks. It's not happening. <laughs> And, uh, you know, you think about it, Jeff Van Drew went from the majority uh, to the minority, so it took a lot of courage. So he's hoping to maybe, uh, with the Republican Party, maybe they can get the majority back. So, uh, and the people of New Jersey essentially said, we, re we support your decision. I was in Wildwood, New Jersey. I remember it basically shut down. We were there for a futsal tournament, and there's nothing around. But everything opened up for this opportunity to make some money. The Margarita was also very popular for those who couldn't get in. And the Subpoena Colada were two drinks. <laughs> in which if you didn't get on the inside, you could actually drink on the and, outside. And guys, this is the Jersey Shore. So it's usually a ghost town this time of year. Yeah. Many of the hotels, they said they were sold out. Their restaurants were selling these drinks because people just wanted to be right. in the area and watch from even outdoors. That's right. And the bottom one is a Sanders. I think you buy it and then you wind up giving it to somebody else. My favorite one, I think it's the third uh, the third one down, Impeach Mint. Punch. Uh, punch. Cold, pu pu a punch. And then under that, the Moscow Mueller. Pretty, pretty hot. <laughs> I uh, like that drink. You know, we asked one. Pete Hegseth to cover this, and we asked him to try every single one of those drinks. Uh, Pete, what was your favorite? You would have done that Are without you swearing this morning? <laughs> well, my, yeah, it's the Bernie one, of course, because I, I, the prices are inflated, but I have to give it to somebody right, else. Right, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't matter. What cost doesn't matter. So, you know, I pay them what they want. They charge me what they want. It's just, it's perfect. But I tell you, we're here at the Vegas Diner, uh, and this place, to your point, it's seasonal. So this place normally doesn't even open up till 8 uh, a.m. They open up at 6 for us, and there's lots of people here this morning. We had a chance to talk to people at the rally. Here's what they had to say. A lot of them waited in line for a long time. Take a listen. Why are you out here to see him? Oh, God, because he's doing a great job. We love him. He's, we need him. He wants to make this state great again. Is there any other politician or even rock band or, or music group that you would come out to wait in line like Trump? No way. Why are the Democrats so obsessed with impeaching him? It's just jealousy. And when people are jealous of you, they will destroy you. They know they can't win. That's why they're doing this, because they can't win. I think it just makes them a landslide victory in 2020. To get this kind of turnout in New Jersey, too, is uh, speaks for itself. Hey, this place, guys, this place packed. Yeah, it doesn't open for two hours. They open early for us. There's already folks everywhere ready to go. We're going to get their voice. And we asked people, do you ever waited for a politician? And they said, no, no, no. The only people we person we'd wait for here is Bruce Springsteen or uh, John Bon Jovi. So it's a rock concert type style here in South Jersey. They're psyched to have the president. And, of course, with Jeff Van Drew switching, uh, they got a new Republican in the mix here in New Jersey as well. Guys, back to you. We'll be talking to folks right, later Pete, on. Uh, I have a sense that Bon Jovi or Bruce Springsteen, neither one will actually open for president trump you never know uh, but you never, you never know. know i'm pretty sure i would say no <laughs> are they a little too hollywood right we'll see. Uh, are, yeah, i just they're big they're overbooked you. right sure and one of the reasons that uh jeff van drew switched he's realistic the president won that particular second congressional district by a landslide last time and mr van drew would like another crack at the apple but then again so would the president of the united states and yesterday his attorneys in the closing arguments they did not take uh, as much time as the democrats by far in fact i think i saw a statistic that apparently adam schiff spoke 445 percent more than Jay Sekulow or one of the presidents. Yeah, I think they defenders. took 11 of 24 hours. So anyway, uh, if you missed it, it was, it was quite compelling. And Jay Sekulow essentially uh, warned, look, if this goes through, there's going to be danger coming throughout the rest of your lives regarding the presidency and the Constitution. Yeah, let's listen. It is not a game of leaks and unsourced manuscripts. To have have a removal of a duly elected president based on a policy disagreement? That is not what the framers intended. And if you lower the bar that way, danger, danger, danger. Why not trust the American people with this decision? Why tear up their ballots? Why tear up every ballot across this country? You can't do that. You know you can't do that. The reason in the president's mind is something that they ferret out and decide is wrong, that becomes impeachable. And that's exact, that's 
not a standard at all. It ends up being infinitely mapped. And they laughed yeah, because the same people are still in the chamber. So the bigger question now uh, is what happens next? Well, they're going to have their questions. They're going to be written down and they're going to go over that over the next uh, day or two. And then the question is, will there be witnesses? Original reporting yesterday made big headlines that Mitch McConnell said, hey, I don't have the votes yet right. to negate the opportunity to witness, which means over 51, over 50. So instead of 50, 50, it'd be 51, uh, which John Roberts would break it at 50, 50. But he didn't say he didn't have it. He didn't no. say he lost it. He doesn't have it yet. And evidently in the caucus meeting yesterday, they went back and forth about the pluses and minuses of witnesses. And one thing they pretty much agree on, Republican senators are extremely worried that Schumer will painfully drag out the process. Even if you give him the four he right. wants, they're going to say something that he's going to want another four. And this thing's going to drag out until the spring. Well, all, that is, if they get witnesses. Uh, but well, the, that's what I'm saying. The administration is optimistic they will get to the right number. Mitch McConnell just, you know, apparently on his table he had cards that said yes and no and maybe. So it was clearly a whip count. He did not reveal at the end uh, to the senators what the exact number was. But nonetheless, it's to put pressure on the people who have not taken a side yet. Well, uh, Cory Gardner spoke, and he's one of the guys who's, uh, he is a Republican from Colorado. Might break off. Uh, he is in a tough competitive race out there. And he spoke yesterday along with uh, Martha McSally and Tom Tellis. And Cory Gardner said the longer the trial goes on, the more Democratic attacks are going to happen. So it sounds like he wants to get it over with. So apparently what, the, uh, what Mitch is planning is he's got a plan B. And part of it is to amend any resolution on witnesses to include John Bolton and Hunter Biden and the whistleblower. The and then what they would do is they would write uh, another part to the resolution where if any key witness like Hunter Biden or the whistleblower defies the subpoena, it's over. So they're they're expecting they're trying to make a plan because this whole thing could be over at the end of the week if they don't have additional witnesses. Mm -hmm. But there are these four Republicans that are in these tough areas and they're trying to make a decision. If they decide to break away from the Republican Party and many think that they will, then Mitch McConnell has these different plans. One yeah. would be the package deal where if you ask John Bolton to come, then we're asking Hunter Biden, maybe Adam Schiff. And the other plan would be if we it, we could assert executive privilege. Right. The president, the administration could go to court and ask for an emergency injunction against like a John Bolton who used to work for him so he can't talk. Right. I know. Right. security grounds. Right. Meanwhile, uh, Joe Manchin, Kristen Sinema, and Doug Jones are also Democrats who are undecided. That could change things. Congressman Jim Jordan knows this case as well as anyone. Weighed in on where we're at. It'll never be enough for the Democrats. They're always going to want something more. And understand where we're at right now, Sean. The witness count right now is 17 to 0. Adam Schiff subpoenaed all 17 witnesses. We didn't get to call any of them. So it's 17 to 0. And what do the Democrats want? They want it to be 18 to 0. And then pretty soon it'll be 19 to 0. We should stop this now. All the facts are on the president's side. The Constitution is on his side. And the lack of due process that was not there for him in the House, that argument's also on his side. Let's get this over with this week. Well, oh, an administration official spoke to the Washington, uh, Washington Post and the Wall Street Journal and said, they are optimistic they will get to the number of votes so that there will be no witnesses. If you were watching Brett Baer's show last night, you saw Senator Rick Scott of the great state of Florida say he doesn't think they're going to be witnesses. He, he said he essentially he knows in his heart uh, there are going to be witnesses. And Lindsey Graham says he's optimistic that they will get to that. We're going to talk to one of the president's defenders, Congressman Doug Collins of the great state of Georgia. He's on that committee. He's going to be with us just about uh, 50 minutes yep. from right yeah. now. And you could really see that this could be out of control because John Kelly evidently made a statement about John Bolton and his comments that are allegedly in his book. And he says, oh, by the way, if John Bolton said it, I believe it, because John Bolton, as far as he knows, has always given his unvarnished opinion uh, to the president. And then all of a sudden, Jerry Nadler goes, I like to call John Kelly. So you could see how this whole right. thing is going to get out of control. Well, the president last night, he said, while we're creating jobs and killing terrorists, the congressional Democrats are obsessed with hoaxes, witch hunts, and deranged partisan crusades. Right. So today it's going to be question and answer. Uh, 
uh, they're going to go majority, minority, majority, minority. Uh, they've, they're going to write down all the questions on paper, and then each caucus will make sure there's no repetition. And then the chief justice will read them out loud, much like a game show host al almost, and then five minutes for each side. To and answer. when will they take the vote on witnesses? We're here That's Friday. That's going to be on Friday. Yeah. Okay. Meanwhile, Julian Mealy, regardless, she's coming to work Friday, and it'll be in Miami. I, I will be there. So will you. Yes, we will. You and you yeah, as well. Tomorrow we leave. It's <laughs> we already leave here. tomorrow. I know. Excited for that. Good morning. In the meantime, let's get you caught up on this. A Fox News. Vision presents a win-win opportunity for both sides, a realistic two-state solution. We will not allow a return to the days of bloodshed. Peace requires compromise. Today's agreement is a historic opportunity for the Palestinians to finally achieve an independent state of their very own. Here we go. President Trump announcing a historic Middle East peace plan, promising to bring harmony to the region after decades of conflict. Generations. Our next guest was in the room for the groundbreaking moment here to discuss it in detail. The Muslim world's reaction as well as Muslim scholar Dr. Kanta Ahmed. And uh, great to see you. Thank you, Brian. You said it was electric in the room. Electrifying, a historic moment, um, the amount of energy that's behind this uh, deal, and really tremendous to witness the work that uh, Jared Kushner has done with Ambassador David Friedman and the President on this. So Senate, uh, the Israel, according to this plan, uh, will annex the Jordan River Valley and permanently setting up its eastern border, may advance as soon as this weekend on this. Uh, they, will have, they will also take in the uh, Jewish communities of Judea and Samara, the so-called West Bank, um, and this is the proposal. The Palestinians will get $50 billion over the next 10 years in investments, high-speed rail to connect Gaza to the West Bank. And I don't know if we have a map that shows uh, a Palestinian state if they can hit these marks that are, that are mapped out over the next four years. Palestinians said, don't like it. First of all, it's very important to realize that this is the first time a Palestinian state would be internationally recognized uh, as a sovereign nation. It also includes the demilitarization of uh, Gaza specifically, uh, the Palestinian state as a whole. But this deal is not only for the Palestinian people, it's a deal for the entire region. This deal can integrate the region economically, free up trade engagement. It creates very innovative financial tools. It will elevate women. It will elevate youth. It will double or triple the GDP. It will reduce unemployment in half. And it will create in that region, the new Palestine, a new Singapore. So this deal is just extraordinary and imaginative. That's $50 billion over 10 years. They really hope to, they say, uh, slash uh, Palestinian unemployment, which is now at 18 percent in half and 52 percent in uh, Gaza, Gaza, in mm -hmm. Gaza, which is unbelievable. Uh, so the Palestinians say we're not going to do this. And I thought it was noteworthy that Jordan, who has a peace agreement with Israel and Egypt with a peace agreement with Israel, was not in that room yesterday. Is that significant? So I also noticed that as I was near the ambassadors to Oman and the UAE and Bahrain, who were present and very strongly honored by the president and Prime Minister Netanyahu there. I do not think it's significant that they were not there. Jordan and Egypt are already engaged partners, longtime allies of Israel. And we, tru we truly know that the patrons of this deal are the United States and also Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. This deal has got the blessing of the Arab world. They're going to go on Saturday to an emergency meeting at the Arab League, and we will see there that the Palestinians saying we're not engaging is not going to fly in the Arab world. The region wants this deal. But with the Hamas, who wins elections, has to relinquish control of Gaza? Not likely. What I also think is interesting in this era is that the Palestinian uh, situation has always galvanized the Arab world. But now with the focus on Iran, the, the Palestinians aren't getting the focus, and it's not so cut and dry. Israel's got allies for the first time in this area. That's very well said. And we noticed that in the statements of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and Egypt, both of them encouraging direct negotiations of Israelis and Palestinians, both of them applauding President Trump's efforts, the United States' efforts. The only state that didn't say that was Jordan that said that this is the prime issue for the Arab world. That's no longer the case. The prime issue for the Arab world is Iran, it is Syrian refugees, it is ISIS, it is the collapse of Lebanon and Hezbollah, yep. tremendous problems that we have beyond this. If the Palestinians don't take this, they're walking away from an extreme 
extraordinary opportunity. Benjamin Netanyahu will be joining us in one hour and a couple hours, and then we're going to end the show with Jared Kushner, who helped construct the plan. Thanks so much for bringing us inside the room, Doctor. Uh, my honor. Okay. Uh, coming up straight ahead with six minutes before the bottom of the hour, CNN in damage control, so to speak, after a panel bashes and grins and mocks Trump supporters. The televised CNN panel is facing intense backlash for trashing President Trump and his supporters. Watch this. Donald Trump couldn't find Ukraine on a map if you had the letter U and a picture of an actual physical crane <laughs> next to it. He knows that this is, you know, an, an administration defined by ignorance of the world. And so that's partly him playing to their base and playing to their audience, uh, you know, the, the, the credulous boomer rube demo that backs Donald Trump. Are you elitists with your geography and your maps and your spelling? <laughs> even though my your math and your reading? Rick, you, that you, was a good one. I needed that. And he did need that, obviously. Uh, and, of course, Donald Trump, an international business person, would have no idea where any country is. He'll react as media reporter for The Hill and radio talk show host Joe Concha. Joe, how big a deal is this? It's a very big deal because the Trump campaign has already put out a campaign ad with that particular clip. Because that shows what many people in media, not all, certainly, but many, think of Trump supporters. If you're old and you're white, you're an idiot. And that's why you voted for the guy, or as Rick Wilson, who is a GOP strategist, the credulous boomer Rube demo. What I didn't hear in that particular clip last night of Don Lemon, because he addressed this finally three nights later, is the word sorry. He didn't say, I am sorry to the 63 million people that voted for Donald Trump. All he did was try to explain away how he didn't hear everything, which you guys have done thousands sure. of shows. You hear everything, unless there's a lot of crosstalk. Well, there wasn't there. But sometimes the producer is talking to her. Perhaps. Ear and we not, do, that went on for 120 minutes, though, uh, 120 yeah. seconds, though, No, Steve. I understand that. I, uh, regarding Don Lemon's reaction, I, I didn't think that joke was that funny. <laughs> Nonetheless, uh, Don Lemon, seeing the backlash, did address it last night. This is the soundbite Joe's talking about. Watch. Ask anyone who knows me. They'll tell you. I don't believe in belittling people. During an interview on Saturday night, one of my guests said something that made me laugh. And while in the moment, I found that joke humorous. And I didn't catch everything that was said. Just to make this perfectly clear, I was laughing at the joke and not at any group of people. Okay. But wasn't so the, the joke, joke on the Trump voters? That's basically the case here, right? And here's the thing. If Don Lemon had to address that last night, why didn't he address it on Sunday? Remember, that clip is from Saturday, Sunday, or Monday, or all of Tuesday. He has a Twitter account last I checked. He had a show on Monday night. He's only saying this now because the president called him out, and then other people as well have gone on, and this thing really went viral. I, I go to Bob Woodward, right? Bob Woodward's writing another book. Mm -hmm. And the president thinks so much of him that now he's giving him full access. Right. And Woodward's a great journalist. He said this right after Trump was elected. He says, I worry. I worry for the business, for the perception of the business, not just Trump supporters. They see that smugness. And right. that's the word. It's not so much the criticism of Trump. If you want to hit him on policy, that's fine. It's the smugness and the condescension that we see from yeah. so many people Isn't in this business. Isn't it more business. of how the media, we've seen this time and time again. So when he took it that far, I think that's when the voters said, hold on, is this a slam on me? Why do they keep doing this? Because I understand Don Lemon's, I understand his point. He laughed at the joke. He thought that was funny. There were several jokes, Ainsley. It wasn't just one joke. Several. Remember mocking, they like the spelling and all these things. Things mocking their intellect. Joe, yeah, yeah, southern accent. Right. I know. Exactly. Well, right, because when... people in Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, this, Wisconsin. You have some people that say this could backfire. Though, remember, Hillary said deplorable. Then the yeah. Republican Party ran with that and said, "You're calling us deplorable, smelly Walmart shoppers." Sean Hannity always says, "I'm proud to be a smelly Walmart shopper." Mm -hmm. I would say, Ainsley, that the turning point in the 2016 election is when Hillary Clinton referred to Trump supporters as a basket of deplorables. She is allergic to saying she made a, it makes any mistakes. Mm -hmm. She said she regretted saying that. And remember, Barack Obama did the same thing in 2008 when he was running, when he was talking about voters in Pennsylvania, saying that they right. cling to their bitter we're, clingers, th to, to their, their guns, guns, guns and, their and their Bibles. This is the perception over and over, and this is why Trump won in 2016, because these people feel that they are being dismissed, and they will only rally around something Fly like this, as we saw Wildwood country. last night of all places. If you, if you look at our audience, in particular, people watching you now, they're in the so-called flyover country, and they're in the South. The people that evidently don't matter to some matter a lot.
Exactly. And by the way, why are we putting Rick Wilson on TV all the time? He's supposed to be a Republican strategist, mm -hmm. an expert. I went back and looked. This century, I haven't seen him want, run one successful campaign. Mm. But hey, let's put him on anyway. By the way, and let's not put this all on Don Lemon, all right? Because he didn't make the comments. He just didn't right. stop it as a quarterback. Rick Wilson is c consistently put on cable news. He went on Twitter after this happened and has tripled down since in insulting Trump supporters. And the other gentleman that was on there is a CNN contributor, New York Times columnist. He also is doubling down on this as well. Jeff, this they are the ones they that should be apologizing or taken off the air in a suspension. This is why they want to wipe out the Electoral College. They don't want Iowa to have a voice. They don't want middle America to fly over countries to have a voice. Right. And could you imagine what an election would look like then? Then your campaigns would happen New York, here in New, New York, York Chicago, California. Los Angeles, Miami, right? And you wouldn't have any of the issues in Iowa or New right. Hampshire or South Carolina or Nevada right. ever even addressed because who needs those people? Rob right? Reiner and uh, Al Pacino uh, and Robert De Niro will be picking our president. That's right. what will happen. That's right. Not Joe, quite the Irishman, yes. but yes. There you go. Joe, thank you very much for Thanks, making Joe. the trip. All right. In. Thank you. All right. Hundreds of Americans flown. For years you watched as your politicians apologized for America. Now you have a president who is standing up for America. And we are standing up for the people of New Jersey. My friend. And the president uh, spoke, my friends, he said uh, he was talking about how New Jersey right now has the lowest unemployment rate in the history of the state at 3.5 percent is new jersey considered more of a democratic state or is oh, it mixed now? It is even deep, though chris christie was the governor deep blue he was very popular uh, at that time and he was there at the rally last night now he, the he was and so was kellyanne conway and if you yeah. said to yourself i don't remember a new jersey rally i believe it's the president's first new jersey rally and pete you were there to witness it <laughs> Yes, we were. We were at the rally last night, and so were a lot of folks here. They're busy eating breakfast. We're at the Vegas Diner here in Wildwood. And let me ask, let me ask the crowd here. Who here was at the rally last night? Holy cow. Okay, hold on. Who here waited more than like six hours to get in? Okay, who, who waited more than, who waited overnight to get in? Okay, last thing, it's New Jersey, so who here has an opinion? Okay, guys, it's New Jersey, so you know everyone's got an opinion. And people think of New Jersey as just a blue state, as you guys were talking about. But down here in South Jersey, Jeff Van Drew went from Democrat to Republican. So we're here talking to the folks about the president, about that rally, most of which were there or tried to get in. A lot of people who said they waited seven eight nine ten hours couldn't get in but a lot of people 15 as well we got a few folks we're going to talk to this morning about the president i'm going to start with reverend deb moore reverend thank you very much for being here uh your your reaction to the president and, and why you support him so much oh the energy was over the roof and he bought he's bringing god back into god bless america and thank you for your service pete well, and he is it. doing so much for our veterans we just appreciate him so much and today at the chapel we are honoring a veteran of freedom fight that fought for our religious freedoms at noon. Absolutely. A lot of patriots out here in New Jersey, no doubt about it. Anne's one of them as well. Anne, how you doing? Fine, tomorrow. Fine, thank you. Absolutely. Now, we've been talking, and you're pretty, you're pretty fired up about, about impeachment. You know, I asked a lot of people at the rally last night. As, the, as there's a lot of joy and patriotism in that rally, they're doing other things in Washington. I want strong military. I want strong police. I want borders. Respect our president no matter what. It's disgraceful what we're doing. And thank you for serving our country. Well, I appreciate and if anybody it. kills a policeman, they need to go in jail for life. I'm sorry. We're too many are getting killed. Uh, thank you, Ann. A lot of frustration about the lack of support for law enforcement, especially on the Democrat side. Sir, how are you doing? What's your name? All right, John Tisa. Sir, and what do you, uh, you know, why do you support the president? Why are so many people so passionate, almost a rock star status? He is, a, he is a rock star. He's the greatest president of our lifetime. He has uh, promises made, promises kept, making America great, building the wall. It's all there. It's all what we voted him in for to drain that swamp and, and he's doing it but we're going to have to do it this november even more democrats trying to impeach him brief, briefly your reaction it, to that it's terrible it's terrible it's a sham it's a lie they just they know they got to get him out of the way because he's he's going to beat he's going to win so they're worried about 2020. Oh, absolutely. They got to get him out of their way because they have no path forward. There we go. Well, thank you very much, sir. I appreciate it. 
Uh, lots of opinions here in New Jersey, no doubt. Lots of folks ready to talk to us. Uh, but again, as always on Fox and Friends, we want to bring the voice of the people, not just the pundits. We'll be here all morning long at the Vegas Diner in Wildwood. Uh, stick around for Breakfast with Friends. And, uh, you know, we'll see. Very nicely done. Nice 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 all right. Listen, good job, Pete. Uh, nobody does diners like New Jersey. I love the beginning of that when he asked their opinions and how mm -hmm. long they waited. And then does anyone in New Jersey there have an lot, opinion? According to the local paper there in Wildwood, there were a lot of people who stay, uh, stood in line for 12 hours, did not get in. Anyway. Uh, and then they're up early with us. Why not to be on TV? 17 <laughs> minutes now before the top of the hour in another Fox News. Coronavirus cases in four states here in the U.S. 18 American airports and two border crossings are setting up quarantine stations as United Airlines, British Airways all cancel flights to and from China. The problem, though, spreading worldwide, the United Arab Emirates confirming its first case out of the Middle East overnight. U.S. health officials calling on China to allow international medical teams to have access to some of the facts on the ground. A lot of people are speculating, guys, whether or not we know really how bad this is in China because the government there can't be trusted in a lot of cases. We do know that right now, according to what facts we have, this is now worse than the SARS epidemic oh, wow. as Goodness. far as total cases. So well, you make it pop up hospitals on the fly rapidly, it shows a degree of panic. And yeah. some doctors, Rob, are saying they need to be quarantined for a lot longer than three days because they don't show symptoms for a, a while. We had a doctor yesterday talk about how you could have you could you could be spreading this for a week or two, right? Uh, yeah. with, with the NBA symptomatic, no symptoms. I mean, it's that's how it's so hard to to stop the spread. No yeah. kidding. All right, Rob, thank you very much. All right. thank so, you, in Rob. other words, for the people on that airplane flying back, we've got some good news and some bad news. We're right. flying you back to the United States. That's the good news. The bad news is you're going to be in quarantine mm -hmm. for. At least three days. Mm -hmm. No reason to quarantine Jillian. She is perfectly okay. Jillian, I saw that interview with the guy that you did this morning, and he said he wanted to stay for his girlfriend. He had his dog in the pictures. I totally get that. Yes, yeah. he said unless they're an American citizen, wives, girlfriends, whatever the case may be, they can't bring them with them. Right. right. So he said that's why a lot of people are choosing to stay. He said they had food and water for about two weeks, and then after that, they don't know. They're getting Ugh. food deliveries right now, but he doesn't.